This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. Fear is an uncomfortable feeling. Sometimes fear disguises itself as worry, stress, and even anger. Fear can make you feel as if you're working hard, but just not getting the results you want. It doesn't feel like you're reaching your destination, and yet you're not sure what needs to be done, and the road forward is just not clear. Are you judging yourself against others? Are you questioning whether you are good enough? Are you holding yourself back for fear of failing? You may describe it as a feeling of being stuck. And, like being stuck in quicksand, sometimes the more we struggle, the more stuck we become. Fear can literally make you sick. Now, imagine if you could have everything you want and feel you are successful. Imagine having a handle on your fears so they do not get in the way. Picture knowing you are capable and worthy of having all you desire. You can have more joy, ease, purpose, and peace in your life. Valerie Atelis interviews Leanne Gevedoni, the author of Fear Unraveled, Transform Your Thinking and Manifest the Abundant Life You Deserve. Unleashed Essentials focuses on developing healthy habits that become second nature over time, especially for dealing with emotional well-being. Our coaching programs assist you to explore the most challenging aspects of your life and bring about dramatic results that include heightened awareness expanded consciousness, and rapid growth. Our transformation tools help you find your inner wisdom and strengthen it so you can realize your dreams into reality. Unleashed Essentials is there to help guide and support you in your personal process using tools of everyday spirituality, energy medicine, and psychology. Ultimately, our goal is to help you find your own purpose, tap into your why, and learn how to connect to your own intuition so that you will have the power yourself. Leanne Giovedoni is the founder of Unleashed Essentials, the author of Fear Unraveled, Transform Your Thinking and Manifest the Abundant Life You Deserve, and the creator of the Abundant Life Method coaching program. After spending over 20 years working as a physiotherapist, Leanne was inspired to seek an alternative way to heal the body. She was personally experiencing stress, financial struggles, pain, body out of whack, hormone imbalances, burnout, and depression. And she was seeing the same concerns in her patients. Her medical training wasn't providing the solution she needed. This led her to explore many alternative approaches for over 15 years. In 2017, all of the research, personal healing, and work with many clients culminated into the coaching programs she uses today. The Abundant Life Method unleashes the essentials needed to balance the body, mind, and spirit so that you can truly enjoy a life of health, prosperity, and peace. Meet Leanne at leannegevedoni.com. Here is the interview with Leanne Gevedoni. In your own words, who is Leanne Givadoni? Oh, Leanne Givadoni. She's a lady that has come a long way, who has a passion for life, and who just wants to be doing the best that she can do each and every day. I love this idea of having passion. And often I, we explore what it means to be passionate and to have a purpose. Do you connect passion to purpose, Leanne, somehow? I do, and yet I see them as two separate things. 
So for me, purpose is what I'm meant to be doing and what my path in life is all about. And passion is more about the ways that I express it. So for me, the purpose never changes, but my passion might change. So for example, my purpose in life is actually to be a channel of peace, to be able to have peace in my life and be an example of that to others. But my passion has changed because I used to work as a physiotherapist. And so I was passionate about helping people have peace with their physical bodies. Then when I moved to being a wellness coach, I moved, my passion was now about teaching in a different way, but it was still the outcome was to have peace. So I change my passion and the way I express, but my purpose never changes. That is so wonderful. The way you explain that, I never heard it that way. This is very unique. So what comes to mind is the idea of peace. That's something that I, I mean, it seems like we all want to be peaceful all of us. It seems to me that all human beings want that. So for you, what is peace? What is to be in, in that space, in that state of being? Yeah. Um, for me, I was, I was not someone who had a peaceful life. I went through a lot of struggles and a lot of difficulties throughout my, my youth and my early adult years. And so I know exactly what the opposite of peace is. And then in my latter years, I've really come to have a greater understanding of peace. And for me, it, it's a feeling that I get when no matter what's happening outside of me, I can keep myself grounded, focused, and at a place where my emotions stay in as much check as I can have them, right? So you're not emotionless. You're still going to have some fears, but at the same time, they're just in check. So just being able to you know, not worry, not be stressed out, not, um, you know, take everything so seriously, that's where I start to feel that I'm finding that peace within myself. So would you call that a practice of managing emotions or just uh, something that you have realized and now it stays with you as uh, something that never leaves? It's always, always there and you're always peaceful. Oh, I wish I was always peaceful. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, I'm still human and I do have to work at it. So I do have a daily practice that it's a priority for me because I did suffer from burnout and depression. I know what it's like to be in that unpeaceful state of mind. And so I start my day and end my day with specific activities to help me maintain peace. And then sometimes throughout the day, I need to do things to refocus and reground myself. Uh, so absolutely, it's a practice that I've established. And I teach other people how to create that same type of lifestyle. I love your honesty, because we often look for destinations to live from a place of peace forever and ever in a human body, <laughs> it was never realized by me. Like I never really found a place of joy, permanent to anything, has been always like this. I mean, this beautiful adventure though, of being free to feel everything. Yeah, and we live by a law of duality, which is the law of opposites. And so we have to have those moments to actually bring us towards the feeling of peace, we have to have the opposite to, to be a human being anyways. So I've just learned to not get freaked out about the opposites. I used to get freaked out. Oh, yes, tell me about it. <laughs> now I just observe and notice and recognize the opposite, allow myself self to process it, but always looked for the peaceful, positive, happy energy. And that's a lovely place to operate from, like being open to life. That's what I call it. Do you have any spiritual practices or any spiritual belief systems? <laughs> do I have any? I have a lot. <laughs> you do? <laughs> um, there are certain things definitely that I live by. Um, so I do believe that I need to connect within so that I can connect above. Mm. And what I'm connecting to above is, I don't necessarily call it a God. I completely believe that we are able to co-create our experiences. And so understanding what we believe 
and not just on a subconscious level, but on a soul conscious level mm. is very fundamental to the way that I live my life. Um, so yeah, I, I could probably go on for hours <laughs> about my philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How would you describe what intuition is and how do we learn to distinguish that voice, to listen to that voice of intuition? Yeah, so I... I break the word intuition down into in tuned with, and then I decipher, you know, I had to learn all the different things that you can be in tuned with, and they kind of go in a frequency, almost like the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do scale in music. And so I can be in tuned with things that are a lower vibration, like the do, and then I can continuously be in tuned with things that are at a higher vibration. And so the more I go within and beyond my ego, the higher that vibration and the more in tuned I'm becoming with a vibration that's going to be more helpful, I guess would be the word I would say, more helpful, more open, more connected. More helpful to experience peace, right? That this is something that one of your purpose. So that would make sense because it really seems like everything is energy. But the way I see it is everything's energy and all kinds of energies are necessary for the experience in the human body or the experience here, um, this that we call life. So in a way, it's so much easier to find peace when we are open to everything. Like you said earlier, it seems like you're trying to manage or engage in practices that will lead you to peace. <clears throat> But at the same time, it takes being open, doesn't it, Leanne? Yeah, absolutely. Because the opposite of being open would be blocked or resistance, right? And so if you have blocks and resistance, then you can't have flow going through you, right? And so that would make you feel unwell physically, emotionally, spiritually. And so I'm a real proponent of understanding that Our emotional and mental state is reflected in our physical body. And so for me, when you're closed, then you start to have that come out in your body. And how would that manifest? Do you have some ideas, this closeness? Oh, it can manifest in any type of pain in the body, like actual physical pain. It can manifest in any type of illness, really. It can manifest in mood disorders and anxiety, stress, all of those things are ways that that closed or resisted the opposite of being open um, will manifest in your life. And for me, it was ultimate fear. Like I call everything fear or love. And I have a whole scale of things that are defined as fear with depression being the highest degree of fear and then hope being where it turns. And so if you're between depression and, you know, not quite at hope yet, you're in a closed state of energy, a closed state of flow, which would feel very unpeaceful, right? And then once you hit hope, right, we need hope. And then once we hit hope, we have the ability now to start to vibrate and open ourselves to the energy that's going to create positive expectations and gratitude and calm and joy and happiness, all of those vibrations that are in the energy of love. It really resonates this way when you speak of love, that it's an, the energy of openness, giving and receiving. It's very, very open and it's non-judgmental too, which is kind of what fear does to us. We become Absolutely. so judgmental, right, about ourselves and others and life. And I'll be asking you a lot more questions about the book and um, that relates to fear. So before that, I have a few more questions for you. I have too many questions here, but let me ask you this one. How do you define success these days, Leanne? Hmm, success. So for me, um, success is something I've struggled with because I felt successful in so many ways. And yet there was other ways I didn't feel successful and I couldn't understand why, right? Um, and I kind of came to the conclusion that success is when you yourself feel that you've accomplished what you set out to accomplish. And that's going to vary for everybody. And so for some, it may be 
to do with their work, their health, their family. And I started to realize it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's what you've desired and that you've accomplished what you have set out for yourself. And this is, seems to be a practice or a journey for life. It never really ends, does it? No. Mm -hmm. Trying to express ourselves truthfully and genuinely and somehow releasing those blockages. Uh, that's something that I'll be asking you questions in a moment about fear, because <laughs> that's a big one. Let me ask you a fun question. What do you love most about being in the human body? Mm, that's an interesting one. What do I love most about being in the human body? I think I'm, I just marvel at the ability of the body. So I was, a, I was a physiotherapist for many, many years, like 20 years. So I have a very, you know, deep connection with the body. I worked with people's bodies for 20 years. And just, you know, the anatomy and the, you know, I actually dissected a body, right? And so just like in my mind, the details and the interest, you know, the way that the body works and how it all comes together, that really fascinates me. And so the fact that I am that body, right, it, yeah. it just, it's a marvel, really. And my last warm-up question is, what is your understanding of true power? What is to have true power or exercise true power? Mm. Well, one thing I know deep, deep in my heart and soul is that true power comes from within. And so, you know, looking for power outside of you, you're, it's a moving target and you're never going to find it and you're never going to be happy, even if you think you found it. Um, so for me, true power comes from within and it is, I think, what we all, you know, really long for. Um, and it has to come from within, but then we need that. I see two levels of trust. One is when I completely trust myself, I will have that internal power, but then I also have to trust in the greater power. And so when I bring those two trusts together, then I have true power. Now I wonder what the difference is because I see human beings so being life itself. I don't separate life from life. So uh, when you say uh, trusting ourselves and trusting something else could be God, source, the divine. When you say that, it, it comes as one and the same. There's no separation between life or God or the source and ourselves. It seems that you still feel or see, perceive life this way. What would that be to trust oneself? And then what's the difference, Leanne, between these two kinds of trust? Yeah, I think it's a conceptual thing. So because because you have to experience everything in life to truly understand something you have to experience it and so there's that element of getting to the place where i think ultimately if you could just trust in the higher then maybe there would be no other that's necessary but i don't think the average person can do that 100 percent. i think the average person still has to find the trust in themselves so, for example, I, one of the things I struggle with is trusting that I'm even connecting to the higher power and able to follow and flow with it, right? Like, I sometimes question that. It's like, you know, am, I know it exists, but am I capable of allowing it into my life and being a part of it, right? Mm. So that's something that I know I've struggled in my, in my meditations with, for sure. It seems like the... Those doubts, they might never go away, even when you are already there, which I believe we are already there anyway. We are the unconditional being expressed in the conditioned, which is the body and mind. It really feels like everything already is anyway. But yeah, you're right. It is an interesting movement, dance. I call it dance. <laughs> it's the most amazing dance, really. Yeah, and in theory, I know it, right? <laughs> yeah. In practice, right? In everyday life and everyday mm. practice, I still find myself having to trust both aspects. I, you know, I go back and forth between trusting myself, trusting the universe, trusting myself, trusting the universe, and wanting that to be a, you know, 
a dance where the universe is leading and I'm following, I think that's the best that I'll be able to do, at least at this stage in my life. So you wrote the book, Fear Unraveled, Transform Your Thinking and Manifest the Abundant Life You Deserve. Talk to me about how you became a writer and what was the main intention and inspiration to write this book? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say I'm a writer. I'm a coach. And what happened was, as I was coaching people, I'm very practical and very systematic in my, my own life. And as I was coaching people, I came to know that I had to teach the same thing over and over and over. And so I thought it would be sensible to put it in a guide that people could use when they weren't with me. And then I could easily refer to it when I needed to teach them something. And then our time together could be used at really integrating and getting through the blocks um, so I, that's where the book came from. And I just put it all, all my favorite tools in an order that makes sense that I saw my coaching clients need to go through. And there are so many tools in your book. So many, some of them caught my attention. One specifically, so many, I have them here, but there's one that you speak of. I think it's called the pie visualization. Talk to me for a moment about this exercise, this tool, Leanne. Yeah, so that actually came to me oh, almost 15 years ago when I had very poor self-care um, habits. I took care of everybody else and didn't care of my didn't take care of myself at all. And I was just learning to meditate. And during this meditation, I literally saw a pie. And the meditation was to just cut the pie into all of the slices that represented everybody I was giving myself to. And so in the visualization, I'm cutting the slices and, you know, the pie is not even big enough now to give everybody a slice. And I'm all proud. And I look up and my guy says, and did you give yourself one? And I didn't. So then in the meditation, they showed me that if I doubled my pie, if I doubled the size of my pie, not only would I be able to give everybody a slightly bigger piece, I could have a piece for myself. And so the doubling of the pie was the message of self-care, that I needed to start taking care of myself so that I actually had more to give. It wasn't selfish. It wasn't, you know, anything like that I thought it might be. It was simply when you take care of yourself, you have more to give. And they showed me it in my meditation via this apple pie. Yeah, yeah, it's so cute. I love that. It's fun too, just to think about it. Do you see self-love and self-care being the same? It's the same practice or understanding or they are separate somehow? I think self-care is an expression of self-love, but I caution people to be careful about what they think self-care is. Because back in the beginning, when I started this journey, I thought self-care was going to the gym, getting a facial, getting a massage. And, and those are all important and necessary. But it wasn't until I truly started to ask the questions that I ask in the book, until I really delved into who I was and started looking within myself that I actually started to love myself. And so my self-care habit became what I call me time, where I schedule out time in my day to actually ask those deep questions and do the work of checking to see where my blocks are and, you know, being aware of my beliefs and all that kind of stuff that I do. So for me, the type of self-care is really important and self-love is the, self-care is just one of the ways that you will express self-love. Yeah, that really resonates. It makes a lot of sense to me. Thank you for saying that. Because I remember engaging in self-care a lot to the extreme even um, without loving myself, without any self-love. Exactly. And, that, and that's what I, that is what I caution people about, for sure. You wrote, there are two phrases, that, let me just read them. You wrote, people think they understand manifesting, but they are pieces that they seem to be getting stuck on. 
This is something that you sent to me. So talk to me about that. Why are we, or people in general, thinking that they are getting it right, that they understand, but they don't? What makes mm -hmm. you think that way? Well, one of, one of the things that comes to mind is people being shocked when something bad is happening to them. It's like, why well, did manifest that? I only manifested, like if something good is happening, I've manifested that. But if something's not working out, I didn't manifest that. But if you truly understand manifesting, you know that it, it's both, right? Now, I don't believe that the bad stuff is bad. I believe it's part of that duality and necessary for us to actually learn. But I, I've always, you know, I get that a lot from my clients where they're kind of shocked that something happened and it's like, well, let's look at the belief systems that would have brought that forth. And that is very shocking to them. So that's one thing that leads me to say that. And then the other thing is just, you know, kind of an introductory idea of manifesting is if I think positive and I say affirmations and I do a goal list in a vision board, then that's manifesting. Um, and that's a piece of manifesting. But again, knowing your beliefs and what you're putting out and what you're aligned with is really key to being a, a good manifester, right? Someone who actually is working with it in a way that brings forth the things that you truly want for your life. Wow. Then when it comes to understanding and knowing our belief systems, that doesn't seem like an easy job. What are the best methods to uncover those belief systems, Leanne? Um, one that I love that's really quite simple, actually, once you get the hang of it, is the, um, the mirroring tool. So in psychology, it's called projection. But in my, you know, my world, I call it mirroring. And that's the statement that anything that bothers you about someone else is really a reflection of yourself. And so if something's happening where I'm bothered, upset, I call it a trigger by somebody else's words or actions or a situation, when I reflect that back onto myself, I will know exactly what my beliefs are. It's happening because my belief is connected to it, right? So that's one of my fastest and easiest ways that I tap into my belief system is using the mirroring tool. We carry belief systems and negative ones. Is there a way of eliminating them altogether where we don't have any more? We are not judgmental anymore. We are just open hearted and there's just amazing, beautiful thoughts about everything and everyone in life. <laughs> is that possible, Leanne? I think it's a goal. I think it's definitely a goal for, I know it's a goal for me. I believe that it's a process and that it's an unraveling. That's why I call my book Fear Unraveled. And I believe that I, I'm, I'm way better than I ever was. Will I be perfect at it? I don't know. I guess that's left to be seen if that's possible or not. But it's definitely um, something that inspires me. Yeah. Beautiful vision. We can navigate this reality in this beautiful way with no judgments. And I love that. I mean, it's just a beautiful vision. It's lovely. <laughs> Even if we never get there, it's already is lovely. <laughs> Even to think about it. Another passage that you wrote is, with the world's events, people are feeling more uncertainty and falling into being content, even though there is still so much life to be experienced. Mm -hmm. So why did you write this? This is interesting. When I read, I was thinking about it, but what makes you think this way, really? Yeah, just, just what I'm observing in, in my conversations with people prior to the events that have happened in the past couple of years, I really felt that people were excited about looking into this um, self-help journey. And recently, I'm hearing more people say things like they're tired and they, you know, they literally have said things like, I just want to have a glass of wine and watch TV. I don't want to have to think anymore. I don't want to have to do anything. And so as I was hearing these comments, it just really struck me that I understand why, absolutely. But I also feel like 
that is an uh, that is still a level of fear. It feels like it's not. Content feels like it's not fear, but content is um, at the low scale. It's, it's, it's at the low scale of between fear and love energy. So it's not bad, but it's definitely not living a fulfilling, abundant life. That's interesting to hear because we often think about contentment it's a beautiful state to be. I mean, if we could live there, why not? Being content in a sense of being at peace with oneself. And you see, it's not to be confused with the, the idea of not doing anything, because I think it's impossible not to do anything anyway. We are in a human body, so we will always do something. But maybe the message you're trying to communicate is that passion, right, Leanne, the excess and the purpose of one's life. Yes. And I, I can see where people would think that content is the same as peace. Yeah, right, right. They're right. not the same energy. If you were to put them on a scale of energetically, content is, is a lower energy vibration than peace. And so content is um, even boredom. Like content is just one above boredom, right? So I can see why people are, I was going to say content, but I can see why they're okay with being there but in the grand scheme of things it's not ne- it's not necessarily living to your fullest potential right because i could be content but there could be more that i could be doing to live to my fullest potential what is true to me and that would make me feel more at peace when i'm living my full um, potential because there's a discon- discontent and a longing right and so when you are, when you have a longing within you, but you're not expressing it and you're not letting it live, there is internally a discontent. You believe that this is coming from the events in 2020, all the challenges that everyone faced and now they're kind of tired of all of this and in a way given up? I think it's really just, I think it's really um, back to that conversation we had about the power and trusting in yourself and trusting in a higher power. The events that happened, I think it's really affected people's ability to trust, right? Because, because the unknown that we are faced with is a scary unknown for many, many people. And so even the idea of making plans feels hard for people because it's like, well, uncertainty, I don't know what's going to happen. I could plan a trip and they could close us down again, right? Um, I could do this and I, and this could happen. So I just feel that it has created a greater state of fear in people for sure. To me, what comes is uh, everything is the unknown. Life has been the unknown. We think we do know, but that could change at any, at any moment, any second, everything could change. And I, yeah, and I think in theory, we all know that, but this situation that we're in has brought it to the forefront. And now we right. know it. Right? Ah, yeah. The unknown became known. <laughs> That's yes. interesting. And so if you don't <laughs> have that established foundation of yeah. that trust, yeah, it's going to make it a lot harder to navigate these these times that we're in. Right. It's that idea of being the calm in the storm. You know, so many of us weren't calm before the storm. And so now that the storm has hit, you know, our lives, it, it it's just even harder. Right. But if you were already had that foundation, then you could navigate it easier. And so I always say that my depression was like this time for me. So what the you know, what the world is going through right now is what I went through when I was depressed. I was, I, I had to be isolated. I, I you know, I, I spent time by myself and I was afraid and I was worried and all of these things, right? So when this time came, all the work that I did allows me to be the calm in the storm. So I can see people who it's affected more and I can see people who it hasn't affected as much. And I think, I don't know for sure, but I think some of the difference was who they were before it, it hit. That makes sense. I uh, beautifully said about that trust, trusting 
what we call life, the universe, God, the source, divine force. Yeah, that makes so much sense to me. Like in this case, in my case, it really didn't, didn't really affect me in any way. So I was surprised at that too. I mean, it did in the sense of uh, people around me, that's so many cases of people who became sick and then so many people died, lost the body. But because I don't hold the belief system in, of death, it's like that trust that you speak of, trusting life itself in navigating as life itself, experiencing this as life. It's my hope that people will be able to start to see that maybe it's just shining light on the areas that needed to be embraced and improved on in the, in the first place, right? So not seeing it as a negative, but seeing it as an opportunity to, to grow. And where you struggled is where you need that growth, right? And so that's how I've been navigating and, and sharing with the people that I have contact with is, you know, what if we look at it as it's shining light on the things in your life that maybe aren't serving you or that, you know, do need repair. Because it's the only way to heal, isn't it? If there is such a thing as um, something that I believe in, and I use that word a lot, healing, because it has to do with opening the heart. So with the healing, doing the healing work, it really requires the, uh, the fear or whatever that is not connected, whatever doesn't feel connected to source to come up. It seems like it has been that way. It has been my experience too. So it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, Leanne. So this is my be happening because so many of us need to realize what life is all about, what this experience has been about. So that's uh, an amazing opportunity. I think it's, it's beautiful though, although it is beautiful and not beautiful at the same time, really. Well, the reality of it's hard and the idea of it is easier to stomach, but then being the one that's going through it and living it. Yeah, it, I get it. it. It's challenging and it can be difficult. Yes, right. You write something that caught my attention. You said the universe will respond to the thought that holds the most emotion. So it's interesting how emotions, they are connected to the universal energies and thoughts. And another thing that you said in your book that you write is um, about you give some simple steps to master manifesting with greater ease. That's the title. And the first one is focus on what you want. Mm -hmm. It's interesting just by saying that. That is so challenging to do, isn't it, for most of us, to focus on what we want and not the opposite. <laughs> it's easy to go there to the opposite. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's part of our our primitive minds, like our, our brain, our limbic system, where its job is to protect us and it has to protect us by making sure we know what's danger, right? So that's why it's so easy for us to focus on the negative. We have to use our higher brain centers to focus on the positive. And so just by nature, it's easier to focus on the negative. So that in of itself is a challenge for manifesting. But also I noticed that a lot of people don't know what they want. Yeah. So ah, that would be of, step one. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't even know what they want. Right. And, and a lot of people don't feel that they have permission to ask for what they want. Right. You know, you might feel undeserving, unworthy. You might have, you know, again, it goes into all these different belief systems. But, you know, you would think it's such a simple step. And yet I find that I have to coach people in quite a lot of um, extent to what is it that you do want and allow yourself to have permission mm. to believe that you can have it. Right. So right. there's all these different layers to it. I would talk like this, it makes me think about ancestry and all these, the body, the biology and how, I mean, there are so many influences here that's unknown to us that we are operating from, I mean, it seems to be many even. I don't know if there's one center, one voice. It seems to have, from my experience, many voices, one in a sense of belief systems. Oh, absolutely. I had, I, 
I refer to it as whose voice is it, right? Right, so, yeah. You know, unraveling yeah. all the different voices that are influencing you and understanding what your voice, and that's why we have to learn to go within because the only voice that you need to be able to hear is the voice that is within you, that is your true voice, your true essence that comes from your creation. Um, so yeah, it is complex for sure. But I have to say like in my in my method that I've created as a result of um, my coaching my book, I really have a pretty straightforward method for doing it. Yeah. Um, and then it just needs to be integrated. Oh, I love that, Leanne, uh, to find, even um, identifying that voice. And then what could you say about that authentic voice that can be a reference for many of us? Are there some side posts? I have those voices. So it's deciphering other people's voices is the easier part, right? So learning whose voice is yours. But then even when you go within your own voice, you have your subconscious mind, which is a voice. And then I talk about your soul conscious mind, which is another voice. And then I talk about your spirit, which is a third voice. And so I w walk people through the process of unraveling the subconscious, unraveling the soul conscious so that you can connect to the spiritual consciousness of who you are. And what can you say about the spiritual voice? What does it sound like? How could you describe that? Oh, the spiritual voice is the softest, gentlest, most loving voice, um, almost too simple. You know, you'll doubt it because it has such simplicity and such basic ideas and influences on you. Um, but that's the voice, right? Like that's the voice that is that connection between yourself and where you come from. Yeah. Oh, I love, I love that. Uh, it resonates, the simplicity, that the complicated voices will, <laughs> will deny, right? Not listen to it because it's too simple to be true. I agree. So you are a medical intuitive, transformation coach, wellness educator. You're also the founder of Unleashed Essentials and the creator of the Abundant Life Method coaching program. What is like to work with you? You have been already talking about, but if you want to disclose more about that, that would be wonderful. Do you offer online sessions and also in person? Do you work with um, individuals, groups and corporations, Leanne? Yeah, so that's another aspect of my work that's continuously evolving. I no longer work one-on-one -on -one in person and, you know, I, I, I'm actually happy about that because I have a bigger reach now. Um, so with the things that happened over these past years, I've really just focused on getting a really thorough online program that I can offer as a hybrid. So you can do it just fully online, self-directed, or you can use the online portion and then um, kind of one-on-ones -on with me either via Zoom or telephone, depending on where you live. So that's really fun. Um and how I'm doing most of my work these days. But I'm also working with businesses as well, going into businesses and offering their staff um, the same type of program, but just offering it to the entire staff of a, of a company. And so that's something that is um, in my work right now, but a little bit on the new side, because um, I was doing one-to-one and now I'm doing one to many, and now one to many within a workplace. Yeah, so that's great to know. And all the information that we need, it's on your website. Is that correct? Or there are other places to find you? My website, I'm on Instagram. I have a free Facebook group where people can kind of get to know me. I do lives on in there every like every week I go on live so people can see my face and hear my voice and get to know me. Um, I think that's important when you're working with a coach that you resonate with the coach. And so if people are curious to know a little bit more about me before they, you know, start working with me, then that's a, a easy way for them to do it. Yeah. So that's great to know. I'll have your website link on the podcast profile and your website link is? All of it goes to the same place. I have unleashedessentials.com 
And then my name, leannejebedoni.com or fearunravel.com. They, and they all go to the same site. I love, love chapter two and three. Two, it's about self-love, loving yourself. Chapter three, embracing who you are. So I love your tools. Everything, it's so positive, but beyond positive. It's, it really resonates true to me, the work of healing, of uncovering who we are. It's basically what, what it's about. So it's really, really, really useful for all of us. Uh, let's see the ending questions. What was the hardest lesson to learn about yourself in life as of today? Well, the book is centered around my story, to be honest. I used every one of those tools to get through my own depression. And I discovered that my biggest issue was that I didn't feel good enough. No matter what I did, no matter what I accomplished, I always felt I wasn't good enough and that other people's will was more important than mine. Um, And so that was the biggest thing that I had to overcome to get to the place that I am in my life today. And the last question is, what are three things you wish everyone to experience before they lose the body, before they die? Peace. (laughs) Obviously, peace would be the biggest on the list for me. Um, But love, like, like someone in their life that they can share this life with, whether it's a partner, whether it's a child, just another human being that they feel really connected to and that they can share this life with. I, I, I would love that for everybody. Just being the best that, you, that they can be, just doing your best. And that's all we can do. I agree, no pressure, no forcing right, ourselves to do what we are not ready to do. I, I love that message too. Thank you so much, Leanne, for your presence, for what you do and how you do it. Thank you for the desire, this beautiful, sincere desire to help yourself and others. We will talk soon. Thank you. Take good care of yourself. Bye for now. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Leanne Javadoni and her work, please visit leannejavadoni.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.